I go there and I am in awe. And I am never in awe over architecture. So I loved London, and I think that's really just because I love the mega cities across the world. There was so much vibrancy, everything was moving around, there were always buses, there was always the tube going, people walking around, whether it was tourists, business people, the locals, and just the whole British culture really cultivated into the city, whether it was the restaurant scene, the play scene, the football culture. It just had an atmosphere that I was like, oh my God, I could really see myself actually living here. It's that vibrancy that made it feel like a mega city, which London is a mega city, and I really love mega cities. So I pretty much saw all of London when I was there. We started off at Big Ben and the Parliament Building. And I gotta say, the British Parliament Building is legitimately my favorite building in the world. I mean, just the beauty that it beholds with its like gothic looking architecture and you have all the windows, it's like gold glaring out into the sky on a nice sunny day. It's just something about it that it's a blend of medievalism with today and it, just it stands out in the skyline within London. I go there and I am in awe and I am never in awe over architecture. I sit back and I'm like, look, that is pretty cool architecture, but I'm never like, wow, this design is top notch. Additionally, I was in, went to Buckingham Palace. Of course you gotta go to Buckingham Palace. Yeah, I'm starting off with all the touristy things. It was very chaotic. There are always going to be a lot of people there. And to me, it's cool. You see the guards and it's a palace. Besides that, it's nothing much more, but it was kind of like just, you know, kind of like a check. I got to do it, do it if I am in London. Something cool though is after my flight landed around 7 a.m., we drove by Buckingham Palace while it was still a little bit dark out. And we got to see it with nobody there as well. We didn't actually get to get out of the car because we were just driving past it, but that was interesting to see. Then Trafalgar Square. Unfortunately, when I was there, it was gated off because it was undergoing construction. And there was also a big, big protest going on about equitable pay, but a lot of action always happens in Trafalgar Square. All of those big red buses, seems like Trafalgar Square is like one of the hubs for the buses. And uh, we got to see those lions, which I think are so cool. Got to hear some pictures of me in front of the lions. And uh, it was a centerpiece for where we were able to kind of go because Trafalgar Square is very centrally located within London itself. Then additionally, one part of London I love, and I love this about so many cities, is the River Thames, which is right in the middle of London, cutting right through it. And there are many cities that everything is like to the north part of the river and nothing's to the south. But here in London, the river cuts through everything. You have like areas like Waterloo in the south, and then pretty much like the main tourist attractions in the north. I stayed in Waterloo, and uh, it was a very nice area, a little more businessy. I felt like personally, um, but in addition to that is uh, you got a feel of kind of London from a less touristy stance. Don't get me wrong, Waterloo's still a very touristy area as all of London is. But within River Thames, Tower Bridge. This is another one that for some reason, the architecture I find very fascinating, find it very cool. Uh, people will call Tower Bridge the London Bridge, but that's not actually London Bridge. The Lon real London Bridge is just like a little bridge that goes across the river. But seeing this Tower Bridge from night with the lights shining and you had the London cityscape in the background, wow, that view is phenomenal. Also got to explore Chinatown. Me being from New York, you know, the Chinatown wasn't really that impressive, but it was cool to be able to see the culture there. We saw the restaurants. I really liked 
how you had the decorations hanging, going across from building and building, as you can see in these pictures. And uh, furthermore, then we also went to St. James's Park. St. James's Park to me is, again, just like another park. Every city has a park like this, I feel, at least every Western city. Um, you know, it had its a little pond, it had this duck, it had just some green space, but it's great that a city has greenery around it. And before I continue, make sure to subscribe because I'm traveling literally everywhere in 2024. So just hit that subscribe button and also comment, what is your favorite part about London? And then the buses, the buses, the tube, I gotta say, their transportation system, very, very efficient. I love the buses because they're the double-decker buses. I literally just sat on top, sat in the very front seat and used it as almost like a tour. So you know how people will go on the hop-on, hop-off buses? I felt like this was no different, except I was kind of just using my own imagination. I sat there and rode the bus for legitimately like two and a half hours just to be able to take me all around London and see all the corners. And I think that's something you should do too. And then of course, the telephone booths. And then lastly, I did a soccer tour. So one day I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna go to every single soccer stadium in London. Unfortunately, I only got to six different stadiums because there are a lot of stadiums in London. So I went to Arsenal, which you can see right here. Went to Tottenham, went to Chelsea. So you got the three big London clubs there. I went to Fulham Stadium, I was at Craven Cottage. And then I also went to the London Stadium to see West Ham United. I actually saw a West Ham game playing Aston Villa. And that was very, very fun. And then finally, I flew back to New York in business class on Virgin Atlantic. That was really cool. But London, yeah, I love that city. I will definitely be back in the meantime.